All right, good evening. Welcome to another uh, episode of Let the Truth Be Told. My name is Sean Williams, and I thank the Lord for uh, Jason and UPTV for allowing us this opportunity to be over to the studio once again and be able to share with the listening audience and the television audience that's out there um, watching the program. And everybody that say, Sean, I watch your show every Sunday night. And uh, I do have people that watch that at 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday mornings. So I thank the Lord for that. Uh, everybody that support me, uh, my funeral home staff, uh, everybody that's, that's over there, my funeral director, um, everybody at my barbershop, the Whip Hair Designs uh, at 904 North Forest Street, um, all the people at the insurance office, Marcus, Tanya, uh, John, um, Deacon Candler, uh, um, Stacy, so many different people, so many different hats that we wear. Um, so I thank the Lord for everybody that supports me, all you guys out there in the listening audience that, that support um, everything that we got going on. So as we get into our topics today, I, I just wanted to just uh, give a, give a few, few snippets before we got started. So getting into our, our segment on today and uh, Let the Truth Be Told, we're kind of go, just going to cover an array of different areas. Um, on last episode, you heard uh, you, one of my guests was a uh, uh, pastor, uh, well, actually minister, uh, Herbert Burnett, and he was our last guest. And and uh, he talked about uh, uh, an opportunity that might be before him to able to be um, to minister. And so once he got started and once the program was over, be careful what you ask for because you might just get it. And since that episode, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, a position was available and, and happened for somebody else, but it ended up catapulting him. So God will move some things and shuffle some things around and maybe put you in a position that you need to be in. And so I big hats out to my brother Hub and, uh, and um, I, I encourage him as he takes on his new pastoral role over there and uh, as acting pastor at the Greater Holy Missionary Baptist, uh, Greater Holy Temple Church, not missionary, Greater Holy Temple Church, that, uh, that it's an exciting and, and new adventure and he's able to uh, captivate the audience and help heal somebody at the end of the day. So big, hat, big, big shots out to him and his family, his mom and dad, and I'm, I'm sure they're very, 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 very proud of this young man. A uh, great guy um, I was in the military with, and, and uh, so, so I, I know he's going to do a great job. So big, house, big hats out to you again, Hub, um, on, on your new adventure. As we get into uh, some more of our segments, uh, you know, I, I go to Jericho Missionary Baptist Church, uh, 1601 West Bloomington Road in Champaign, and I pastor, pastor Lakeby C. Johnson. And, uh, and, and fortunately, I, I've been able to go to um, a lot of our Bible class segments, our Sunday morning worship services, and we're on a relationship piece um, where we're developing healthy relationships. And I'm, and I'm a big person on relationships, you know, about the people that surround you. What's your inner circle looking like? You know, who, who's the people that you wake up to? Who helps you motivate you in the morning? Who helps uh, uh, focus on the, the, uh, the dreams and aspirations that you maybe have in your life? You know, and that, that plays a vital part of your success. And uh, so as I was speaking with my son, as we came over, you know, you know, your inner circle determines. Uh, Bishop Gwynn always say, uh, say uh, attitude determines altitude. Well, your inner circles determines your, alt your, your altitude and where you end up, you know. And so in, in saying that piece, you know, just relationships are, are, are really vital, you know. Um, I was going over some details of, of maybe some of the scriptures that we had went over in, in, in Bible class. And we, we talked about, an, uh, we talked about an, uh, a, a segment that's in the Bible that talked about Judas then, and how Judas portrayed Jesus. And, and, uh, and, and so, and, and, uh, and, and I was telling my son as we was coming over, you know, um, be, be careful of people that just want to be around you just to be around you. Nobody wants to just be around you to be around you. Everybody wants something out of the relationship. And so, uh, so if they say, hey, I'm just being around you because you're just a good person. Be leery of that because everybody expected something at the end of the day. And uh, it could be good, could be bad. So, you know, uh, just kind of bag out and maybe uh, analyze the relationship that you're, you're, particip you're participating in. And, um, and so not everybody want to see you come up. Not everybody want to see you do good. And so uh, as, 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 I, as, as I play a very vital role, and I thank the Lord for my mother, Miss Rolene, she taught me how to be by, be by myself, be comfortable by myself. You know, I don't need a car full of guys. I don't have to pick up a whole bunch of people to uh, make me feel good. You know, uh, I thank the Lord for, for having just a relationship with, uh, with Jesus and relationship with my own self. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, uh, Cat Williams said, you your own star player. You know, and so in saying that, you, you are the person that motiv should motivate you. Sometimes you got to, sometimes you got to uh, 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 encourage yourself. 
And so a lot of times that's what it's going to be because it's a lonely road sometimes when, you, when you're trying to go somewhere and not everybody going to go with you. And so as we, as we took on that, you know, relationship piece, you know, I, I was watching some young guys down by my barbershop the other day. And, and uh, one of the guys, one of the young men, his dad uh, most recently passed away. And I, and I could see him trying to find himself. A lot of, uh, a lot of our young people out there, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're having an identity crisis. And they're trying to find themselves, and and as uh, as like some of my brothers did, you know, they wanted to follow the leader who was in charge, who was the leader in their lives, and and we had just bad examples around us, you know. And it take you a, a moment and to mature in life to understand that those are bad examples. And so as I seen this young man walking past my shop with all his buddies, you know, smoking a black and mild, you know, and I had to tell him I knocked on the window real hard, man, come on in here. So all 15 of the guys come in and they sat around my shop and I was able to tell them, I said, hey man, talk to your dad before. I spent a long, uh, a long lengthy um, um, uh, time with his dad over the years in the barbershop setting. And you know, and, and as we grew in to be friends, you know, he told me a lot of intimate things about his life, you know, and that, you know, he didn't like the things that he had went through. He didn't like the, some, of the, some of the choices that he made within his life. And I was just able to, uh, be that other ear and that or the voice to be able to talk to his son and say, hey, look, don't start going down a path of trying to idolize or representate what your dad did because dad didn't like some of the things that he did. And we've all came short of the glory. And so we've all made some mistakes in our lifetime. But it's all about getting back up. It's all about finding out and reevaluating yourself because we always constantly got to reinvent ourselves. We always got to constantly reevaluate every day that God gives you new mercy and new grace and a new ch new chance to be something different then you can say well let me be better than I was yesterday what did I do yesterday that could have been a little bit better and every day we can do a little bit better and that's how you kind of move up to that ladder where you want to be at because we reevaluate and we say well look what can I do can I can I can I go pull my credit report and see if I can uh, change some things that's on my credit report. Can I go back to, uh, maybe I didn't say the right thing on yesterday to maybe somebody in a relationship piece. And then I say, well, let me, let me just pick up the phone and call somebody. Maybe just pick up the phone and just encourage somebody. Hey, look, as we go through this here travel and this, this life journey together, then let's forgive each other and let's move forward. You know, and, uh, and that's about the best you can do, you know, because uh, not everybody's going to be at the same place that you're trying to go to. Not everybody uh, wants the same things out of life that you want to, you, that you want. You know, a lot of my young people, they struggle with, uh, with uh, you know, trying to idolize somebody else. So as I sat in the barbershop and my son sits over there, and, you know, we talk about uh, a lot of things. I was listening to the guys the other day, and they, were, they, were, they had a big old... A blow up argument about who's the best. Is it Kobe Bryant? Is it LeBron James? Is it, you know, is it Dwayne Wade? Is it, was it Michael Jordan? Well, like Kat said, you your own star player. You have to focus in on what's going to make you better. Those guys are at a level of success, but it depends on where you place the value of success in. Is it about money? And we put so much on a monetary value of making that be successful, but you could be a successful garbage man. You can be a successful teacher. You know, it might not come with a whole lot of monetary gain, but it'll come with a whole lot of uh, personal peace. And that's a whole nother level of thinking. When you have just a, you're just in a life and it's a peaceful life, you know, you and your wife and your kids just at a peaceful point in your life. You know, just because you got a, just because you got a house don't mean it's a home. Just because you got a nice car don't mean that you're peaceful in your car. You know, and so that's just a whole nother level of just thinking. And we have to we have to constantly like in the last segment talking about changing just the state of mind that you're in. You know, as maturing as a child, I did what childs do. But as a man, I think as a man, you know, as a woman, I think as a woman, I put my priorities in perspective. You know, and every day when I go to the Lord before before him, I say, Lord, whatever conversation I can have, let it be blessed. Wherever my feet tread upon today, let it be blessed. Let me, let the people that I come in contact with be better than when I first engaged them. So that, you know, and that's what, that's, that's what builds up blessings. So then you wonder, you say, well, man, I, I, that was a great meeting I went to. I mean, I went to the bank and that, and they gave me the, uh, uh, they gave me what I wanted, even though my credit might not have been at the way that it should be. And those are, and when you do something for somebody else, 
man, God will change so many different avenues. He will catapult you to such another level. And you'll be like, man, that's just a, such a blessing. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, so so as as we go through the relationship piece, you know, um, I thank the Lord that on um, on this past week, um, we ended up probably within a week ago. Um, we had a we had a, a funeral that we was able to memorialize and big shots out to uh, to uh, C. C. Evans family, um, a, a older guy that that brought a lot of us in as young people. So when I see my other young people that's out there and like the guy I talked about earlier, whose dad passed away, you know. It's always a ram in the bush somewhere. You just got to seek it out. And so as I was going through and I'm trying to find my way as a young person, um, I was able to have an opportunity to be a member of the Boys and Girls Club in Champaign. And back then, we just called it the club. And so g giving those shots out, big shots out to Miss Angela, uh, Bishop Gwynn, uh, Mr. Uh, the mayor of Champaign, uh, Councilman Kyles, um, my friends Dante, Marlon, Petey, um, uh, Julio Vance, uh, Joe Stovall, um, um, it was just so many intri intricate players that played Reggie Jones, so many different players that helped us get that memorial service together for this family that was, uh, that ran through a bump in the road. And, uh, but, but we, but it's all about the relationships and people coming together. So when you hurt, somebody else feels the hurt and they can feel the void. Um, when I was in California, a girl says, Sean, and I was just starting to cut hair, and I hadn't cut no hair in two weeks, and, and I was getting discouraged. But she said, Sean, you cut good hair. You just got to go out and let people know. A closed mouth can't get fed. So when you're hurting, you got to say you're hurting. I know we all look good. I know we all put on a big front. But sometimes we're hurting in the inside. And that's when we hurt people on the outside because we're hurting in the inside. So I always say hurt people hurt people. But as we tried to help this family this week, we was able to come through and, and what CC did for us when we were hurting as young people, you know, we, we, each one of us had our own, um, our own faults, our own voids, our own things that were missing in our lives. It might've been, um, you know, some of my guys, they were missing a mom and a dad. You know, they didn't have anybody but a grandma. Some of my guys, uh, mom had got killed for one of my friends. Um, one of the one of one of the guys, his mom was on drugs, you know. And so when we all showed up to the boys' club, CC, Jackie, Sut, uh, Blunt, guys that were running, Steve, um, man, it was so many of those guys. They didn't judge us. They didn't look at us crazy because we showed up to the boys' club. They showed all of us genuine love. So we wanted to go there every day. And when we had uh, snow days and we had days that they were closed, we didn't know what to do with ourselves because we felt so much love in the place. So, uh, so as, as we started going and we started doing things, you know, I mean, I, I went to my first University of Illinois um, football game over there at, the, at the, um, boys, the boys club. They took me to my first football game. CC them took me to my first football game. And I was able to see uh, Tracy Parsons play when he was playing for Northwestern against the University of Illinois. Um, man, we we had pool tournaments. I learned how to, you know, play pool, uh, play pool, bumper pool. We did so many different things. I learned swimming. We did so many different things. There's a lot of things that our young people's missing. So as I look back on some of our young people and the things that's missing today because um, maybe a lack of funding or because things cost and we put such such a value on monetary things, so we charge. Uh, uh, these fees that maybe parents can't afford or a young person that's out there lonely can't afford. And so they don't have a place or a space to go like we used to. And so, uh, so I thank the Lord for people like CC, Jackie, you know, coming out their own pocket to help me and my friends. And so as we look back on it, and as I was looking at that service on, uh, on Saturday that we did at the Church of the Living God, and, and, and it was so emotional for me as Jackie talked about his experience and, and his friend, you know. Losing a friend is a tough thing. And, and I understood, I felt him, you know, because I've lost five brothers. I've lost uh, my best friend, my ex-wife, you know, Chris, my, my son Chris's mom. And, and it's just been a tough thing trying to move forward. But as we went through that, uh, that pain all together on Saturday, you know, and then be able to look over there at my friends and be able to see um, how, um, the, how those good role models back then and those people that bridged the gap for us at the time of our need, how those guys were able to instill in some seeds in us to help us move forward through whatever, whatever failures that, or, or things that we were, were missing.
back then. So when I look at uh, my buddy Vince, and he's the pastor of a church down in St. Louis, I look at Julio, and he's a, he's a pastor out in California. I look at Marlon, he's working on his PhD, you know, th throughout all the bumps in the road that he might have had in his life. I look at, you know, Petey and, and the moving forward to want to be a family man, you know. I, I looked at so many different people, my buddy Point, you know, that's, that, that has a job over in the same schools where we went to school at. So he's able to say, I sat in that seat, I did what you did, you know, and be able to be, able to be an inspiration for other young people. And that's what we're here for. That's what God put us here. First of all, to reverence him. Second of all, to help people so that they can see their way because we all need each other, you know. And so as, as, uh, as we have so many distractions, so many things that throw us off, so many things that, uh, that try to take our eyes off the prize and what God has us here for. And so as, uh, as, as we try to, you know, uh, shake it off, I was telling my son, I said, son, today, I, I, this, this is one of the reasons why I go to church, because it's able to peel off the layers, the layers of things that have worn me down for years or, or the things that keep me from being, uh, being the best that I can be. You know, uh, it used to be, a, it was a song I to say, you know, you bring out the best in me. And I, and I tell some people that around me sometimes, you know, we had, we had a young lady that was working with me uh, over at the shop. And, and, uh, Every day she complained. I mean, complain, complain, complain. You know, um, you know how this ain't working. That ain't working. This, and so I told her, you bring out the worst in me. You know, and sometimes people will bring out the worst in you. I don't like my inner circle to be like that. You know, uh, sometimes it might be a wife or a, a husband that 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 just bring your spirits down. It could be a son or a daughter. It could be an uncle or auntie. It could be a coworker. You know. It could be folks right in your church. It, not everybody right because they go to church. Some people just go to church for attendance purposes only. They don't go there to just try to encourage you to be the best that you can be. They look at you from head to toe as soon as you walk in the door. I just went to a church service here recently in town. And I don't know why these folks want to be uh, on the hospitality committee. They need to go back and get the dictionary and find out what hospitality even means. And when, uh, when we got in there, you know, my sister, she's an usher over at Jericho, and she's a head usher, and she does her job well. She's professional with it. And as I talked to her about our experience over at this church, and I said, why in the world did they put that lady in charge of, of greeting people? Meters, and you're supposed to be the meters and the greeters. And when people got an attitude, you know, it throw your attitude all the way off. You know, and, I, and I'm not just all the way church. I go out, too. And sometimes I might go to a club and the person at the door throw me all the way off. I'm ready to go get back in my car because of the fact that, you know, it lets you know what the rest of the night going to look like. <laughs> you know, it starts a spirit. I'm a spiritual person and it just bad spirits rub off on people and then turn that, turn your spirit into a bad spirit. You know, that's why I say it's, it, it's your inner circle. It's your intricate circle. The people that's supposed to encourage you, make you the best. They can be bad spirited. You know, and, and so, uh, you know, as I talked about stripping stuff, you know, and this relationship piece, you know, Pastor, he talked about, you know, uh, he talked about the experience of, of uh, Elijah and Eliza. And Elijah was getting very weary, so he had to go find him a protege. A lot of times we ain't building up nobody else. So as I'm learning stuff and I was, I was trying to learn the barbering game, I was teaching other guys how the barbering game went and how to cut, you know, as I had learned and as people had taught me. And one day, uh, one, day one, of my, one of my close family members said, man, don't teach them guys that. It's called trade secrets. I said, the devil is a lie because if I, I can't take this to the grave with me. I can't take these, these great cuts and these great techniques I know to the grave with me. So Elijah felt the same way. He wanted to teach Elijah. And so as he did that, and as Pastor went into this, to the storytelling of it, because I'm a great listener, and find you a great leader to listen to, somebody that's uh, motives appear, their integrity, their character means something. And that means a whole lot to me for my spiritual leader. And so as I was listening to the story, you know, when he went to go find Eliza, he found him working. He was feeding the oxen. So as Pastor told the story, he was telling, talking to the single young ladies out there and single men. When you go find somebody that's going to connect with you, make sure that they're doing something. They own something. They working. 
You don't want to have to sit up and deal with a relationship. Now you got to pick them up and pull them all the way up and you got to make them be the best that they can be. You know, you got to bring some synergy to the table. You know, what do you bring to the table? Is, how is your credit? Matter of fact, how is your credit? You know, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, what are you coming in the relationship? Is you finna help me and my kids? A lot of times, and I get on my brothers because a lot of times we got to step our game up as men. Come to the table and bring something to the young lady's life. If you get into the life and the relationship with them, with, with the woman, it's a package deal. The kids go with it. So, uh, like, like I tell people, when I when I'm dealing with somebody, you know, if I dealt with somebody, well, I'm gonna make the whole house happy, and that's just the way it go. You know, be men. My mother had to say, don't be no wimpy man. Don't be no wimpy man. And I ain't on that. My brother CC used to say, don't be no punk. You know, we got to stop being that. Start being strong men, get up early in the morning, go to work somewhere, be able to help provide for somebody. So we could take some of this burden off city of Champaign, city of Urbana, educators, you know, uh, the police department, putting the blame on everybody else, but not right there in this household. So we gotta start, we gotta get back to that, you know. And as I keep on continuing to tell this story about Eliza and Elijah, you know, as they went from different places, and as Elijah was showing him the ropes, and as he went to a town, went to the first town called uh, Gitgal, and Gitgal meant the land of cutting. He, you had to cut some off. So sometimes the friends that you had a long time ago, you got to cut them off. So your relationship and your, your healing can start. So start cutting some things away. You know, I went down to Atlanta to, uh, I went, I, me and my family took a trip. And even me in business, you know, uh, I was in business at the time. I started a couple few businesses and, you know, and I noticed that a few things weren't right. You no know, personal life, uh, uh, business life, you know, uh, friendships around me. And I was, I was riding it. Sometimes you gotta take one of them long rides. And I was, uh, as we was riding to go to my mom's uh, 50th year um, class reunion. And as I was riding, and, and me and my brother, we was riding together, and we listened to the music, and we listening to old Motown songs and things of that nature. And we listened to a lot of different stuff. And as we looked at all the, you know, all the scenery going down to Tunica, Mississippi, where the, where the reunion was going to be held, and I thought to myself, I said, man, it's some people, places, and things that I'm going to cut out of my life when I get back to Champaign. And, and, and as I started saying those things, speaking these things into existence, because so, you got to speak it into, you got to encourage yourself, you got to say, man, and you got to tell it to yourself daily, even if you got to write it down. Put them goals on paper. The things that you want to do, put them on paper so they can come into fruition. So I started saying, I'm going to change some things around. When I got back to Champaign, start changing some things. Start doing like, like, like Elijah was showing Eliza. Cut some things out. Cut some things out of, out of your life. So as, as, he, as he started moving on, you know, uh, he started moving on to a city called, uh, he, he started moving on to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to some other cities. And some of the other cities as, uh, you know, uh, Jericho was one of the cities, you know, and that was, the, and that, and that was, that was tearing, tearing the walls down. Then you start to tear some walls down, and you're like some barriers, some things that's holding you back, you know. There's a lot of things. My brother, one of my brothers, you know, uh, you know uh, I had talked to him and a uh, young man that I've been knowing for a long, long, long time. And sometimes we can waddle on our stuff. It might, be, it might be something small, but to us it's huge, it's a huge weight. And, uh, and so as I talked to him, he came over to my house and he said, he said, man, he said, Sean, I went and got that GED out the way. See this GED been holding him back from, for, for accomplishing a lot of things in his life, from going to get that good job, from going to barber school, and, and I could just, I could see the tears in his eyes as he told it to me because you can't tell everybody your business. Because some folks will get your business and they use it right back on you to help hold you down. So, so be real selective in the people that you tell your business to. And so as he told me his business, I, uh, as, as he told me his business, I started saying, hey man, you know, you can, you can do it. You can continue on from here. You know, and he, he just felt so, uh, so elated and, and, his, and, his, and you, can, you can see the, the weight being lifted off his shoulder as he accomplished the new mission of even having his GED. For some of us, that might be a small thing, but for some of us, those are huge hurdles because we beat our own self up about the things that have not went right in our life. We, 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 we are our worst enemy. 
So when you get to saying, I ain't do this because of this, or this person right here uh, held me back, and, and uh, you know, it's the police in my neighborhood. It's, it's the, no, it's you. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So, the, and prayer without works is dead. So that means put your stuff into some actions, you know? And then, uh, and then as, 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 as pastor kept on t telling the story about Elijah and Elijah, they end up moving to a place called Jordan. And Jordan is the place where the Dead Sea is at. And so as he moved to the Dead Sea, some things got to die out of your life. You got to cut them all the way out. You don't do them things no more. I don't go to them places no more. I don't be around them people no more. Those thoughts not the same thoughts anymore. So as, as me, I'm growing every day. It's a struggle every day. And for like you guys out there, it's going to be a struggle. It ain't peaches and cream. Life ain't going to be that. You know, every, and, 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 and I was talking to one of my other buddies and he was saying, Sean, I, I, I really respect you because you don't, you don't let things, you don't let new, new adventures hold you down. You don't, you're not scared to go try something new. And I understand failure comes with it all. But you know, but, but success comes through a gang of failures. That's how you get there. It might not, it, it, this might not work, that might not work. But then the things that we learn from the things that did not work. And then we start reevaluating the things that did go right. So as we keep on moving through those, through those different things, we start, uh, we start changing a few things. We start being better. And you start feeling it deep in your soul and deep in your spirit about just how to create and how to be better. And so as we, I encourage you and, and, and you guys encourage me to just be better. You know, and like my buddy CC did for all of our young people, we just started wanting to be better and better and better. And that's the way young people are. We get in those school districts, you know, and try to make each other better. You know, we try to save all kids. We try to save all kids, you know. And uh, as a man of color, you know, I, 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 I try to help everybody. But, as, but, but we got to, as a man of color, I gotta focus in on trying to, cause, cause when I look at myself, I wanna be inspirational for the ones that, the young folks that look at me. And they say, Sean, how did you do it? Well, it came through struggles, man. It came through a lot of agonies of defeat. You know, I used to be a commercial, you know, the agony of defeat. Because, uh, and then we had another commercial said, I'm falling and I can't get up. Well, as I listen to some other folks and I listen to my buddy T.D. Jakes and he talks about things and he says, man, get on back up. You can do it. And I encourage you guys out there, you can do it. You know, start going to some different places. I, I went and talked to some young people at Lincoln Challenge one time. And, and as me, Dave Barr, and, and Victor, that owns all the El Toros, and, and, uh, we, we, and, and, and uh, Dave, he said, he said, Sean, he said, I got an idea, man. You got a nice vehicle. I got a nice vehicle. Victor got some nice vehicle. Let's do something special. He said, man, I, I really want to do something with the kids. He said, you know, grown people, you know, you know, we all make our choices when we get to be an adult. Some of us, we don't want to grow up. I don't care how old we are. We still want to do the same old thing. But the kids, we got to look out for them. We got to show them a way. And as I talked to my, my buddy, my mentor, Dave, and, I, and so we went up to the Lincoln Challenge program, and um, I talked to uh, Sergeant Major. I said, Sergeant Major, I said, I got some good buddies, and they want to do some great things with the kids. And as we drove up there that particular day, we met and we drove up there, and, and you know, Lincoln Challenge, you know, the new Air Force Base, it kind of looks abandoned. So it, those people, you know, young people, they, they kind of walked to the gym. So it didn't look like anybody was in there. But when we walked in there, we was all amazed because it was over four or 500 kids in there. And as we told our own individual stories, one white guy, one black guy, one Latino guy, to be an encourage every young person in there that you can do it. And as we, as we talked about and told our story and told our struggles, and, and Dave's, Dave's start didn't look like my start. My start didn't look like Dave's. You know, uh, Victor starting the struggle for him and his family coming from Mexico to get here, that was another struggle, you know. But we all put it together. And a lot of times with the relationship piece, if we just all get together, we can't talk about when we get to heaven and we can't get together right on our own block. You mean our own block? We can't have a block party on our block and be able to speak and, and enjoy each other right here? I, I don't think heaven's in our, heaven's in our view. If, if that's what you think, we're going to get it together once we get there. You got to get it together before you get there. So as, uh, as we told our stories and we was able to encourage some young people, and then we brought them outside. And, uh, boy, it choked us all up. 
It choked us all up to see how encouraged they were. But a lot of these young people from the inner city of Chicago, they have so many various different struggles. You know, as I watched the story on Chicago land last night and young people saying, I'm scared to go to school. How is a young person and, and as adults, we creating an atmosphere for young people to be scared to go to school. And so as these young people went through their struggles and I can, I can, I was sentiment with some of the stories the young people told me up there. And they said, you know, young, one young man said, Sean, when I get back to my neighborhood, man, how am I going to uh, avoid the guys that I was used to be in relationships with, the guys I used to know, the, 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 the humps and bumps in the road, the way my neighborhood is structured, you know, the gang problems, the this, this, that, and other. I said, you know what? When you get back to your neighborhood, you change the people, places, and things. When they want to go out to the club, you go somewhere else. When they want to go and they don't want to end up studying and want to go to the local library in town, you be in the library. You start studying. You start focusing. When people start laughing at you because you want to read and you want to write better and you want to do math and you want to do English and you want to speak a little bit better, not everybody's trying to get to where you're trying to get to. So don't worry about that. You, they'll, come, they'll come be your friend later down the road. And so as I evolved in life and, and people have helped and encouraged me, you know, and then some of, my, some of my haters become my congratulators. They'll come back and they'll say, man, Sean, I always used to look up to you. And, and man, I'm so proud of what you're starting to do in the neighborhood or, or what you're doing in your own personal life. Your haters going to become your congratulators. You just got to stay focused. Don't let they hate spear out on you to make you become a hater because spirits, one spirit rub to the next spirit, next thing you know, you hating on everybody around you. You, you, that, dark, you that dark cloud that come into the room. A lot of times I'm memorializing people and uh, I'm reading their story because I just don't get you in there and get your money when I'm doing a funeral service. That ain't me. And so go to the other people if that's what you're looking for. I try to find out who in my basement. You know, I want to find out what your life looked like so I can be able to get those intricate, most significant details out on paper. So we can write that church program up and be able to memorialize your life. And as I find out, and I had one lady, she, she dressed well and she loved, to, she, loved, she loved to light up the room when she came in the room. You know, and, and that was what a lot of her family members and friends said. Said, oh man, old girl, she lit the room up. And she did this all her life. She always liked to dress. She always wanted to, because sometimes when you dress better, you feel better. You know, when you got that fresh haircut, you just feel a whole lot better. When you got that outfit on, you just feel, see that? When I threw my handkerchief in here this morning, threw my hat on, I just felt better. When I put my shoes on, man, I felt better. So when I went to pick my son up, I'm like, man, come on, son, we finna go down here to UPTV and tape this program so we can help somebody. So, you know, light the room up. Be the person that light the room up. Not make everybody want to get out the room. Folks see you coming, they, they get discouraged. Be like, oh man, here come old girl, here come on old boy. You know, and they just, you know, just a, just a dream buster. You know, and, and, and we got a lot of them out there. Because of, what our, because of what life in our society has developed, you know, because the devil out here to kill, steal, and destroy. So a lot of stuff that people got out here for you, it ain't for you. I was, my, me and my brother, we talk, you know, that's, that's one of my advisors too. And, as we talk about an employment piece right here, you know, uh, we was at a church service and, and a young man came in, a young man I know, he don't even know what he don't even know what he promoted. He got this shirt on and it got M and M and it got Skittles on the back and it got all these different candy products on it. And my brother said, he said, look at that. He said, they getting free promotions out of this young man, but he probably couldn't even go up there and get a job. We gotta stop how we being deceived. Because a lot of times, the devil out here to get your money. That's what they out here to do. They out here to get your money. Next thing you know, you done promoted everybody else. They done got rich. They living in the big house on the hill. And here you still in the hood. You still in the hood getting public assistance. And you done went and spend $900 on the outfit. And then don't know where your next meal going to come from. We got to stop going down. Man, we got to stop doing insanity. Insanity doing the same thing, expecting a different result. That's what insanity totally is. And so many of our lives dysfunctional because we don't want to change. Oh, accept me who I am. Oh, I've been like this for a long time. Yeah, you've been in the way a long time. Move out the way and make room for somebody else. Be Elijah and start training up Eliza's. You know, that's how we end up with self-destruction a lot of times. 
you know, we destroying ourselves. And a lot of times we destroying ourselves because of the lack of knowledge, because a lot of times we don't want to pick up a book. We don't go, want to go back and get what the devil then took from us. Go back and get what the devil then took from you. If it was like my buddy that needed the GED, man, go get that out the way. Shake them old friends off that ain't got no GED around you, telling you don't need it. The people that's talking about you can't get past your felony. Man, come on. My buddy getting a PhD and he had a felony. One of my buddies is a professor on the University of Illinois, Dr. P. Big shots out to you. He a professor at the University of Illinois. You know, Judge Mathis talks about it all the time. You know, stop trying to, stop coming up with all kinds of excuses of why you can't be successful. Because you never know who's watching you. You got young people watching, you got your own kids watching you. You know, and, uh, you know, and, and Steve Harvey did a segment, you know, and, and, and it touched my heart so, so, so raw and so real one morning that he talked about, uh, he talked about how, uh, and, and be careful at the people that you start helping out because he talked about a, a young lady, a young man, a man that was, had raised a family that wasn't even his biological family, but he raised these kids up like they was his own. But a lot of times in, in this relationship piece, be careful of people that's always seeking something outside the internal relationship because they're never happy. So whatever you do, you ain't going to never make them happy because they're always searching. So even though that God placed the dad in their life, they were still looking for that void, that extra dad, their dad that was their real dad. And so as the young lady moved, moved on to get married, they wanted the real dad to walk her down the aisle, not the dude that spent all the bread. Not the dude that's paying for it. They wanted him to, and his wife to be a part of that because he's the doctor and the other guy's just the blue collar worker. But the blue collar worker put it all in. And so it hurt, it hurt my heart so bad at what this other man was going through because I know a lot of other guys out there that's raising families and raising people that ain't their kids. And so as, as, we got in, as, we, as I started thinking about that, and Steve said, you know what? He, he got so fired up this, that morning on his morning talk show. He said, man, he said, if we start going back getting our own kids, we wouldn't need all these mentors out here. We wouldn't need all these people that we got to get these non-for-profits and employing them to go out and get the kids, the girls, and the boys that don't got nobody in their lives. The C.C. Evans, the Jackie Vonners, you know, the Suts, you know, the Nates, the Big Mikes, you know, to end up filling the gap in. Man, go back and get what the devil has stole from you. Take your son fishing. Show him how to work on a car, you know, all kinds of things, because what, what's, what's going to happen is the devil going to sift you out like wheat. He know that you're hurt. He got you right where he wants you at. So you're, so, so you're vulnerable. And then and once, once, that, once that you are you out the way, he know, you're, not a, you're not significant. You're not a problem. You're not, you're not, uh, you're not a c competitor to the 1% because the 1% got all the bread. He got, they got what you seeking out for. So, you know, as these television, I always say, uh, news ain't even news no more, it's gossip. <laughs> I can't even find out what's going on around the world no more. You turn on TV, it's all about celebrities and what they got going on in their lives. Atlanta housewives and all kinds of, you know, uh, different shows and what Fabian them doing and Phaedra or whatever name is. I don't even pay attention to them. I see what, I watch it sometimes because I gotta be in tune. You know, but I try to get right in tune with Cat said, get back in tune with your own star player. And that's me. Start getting back in tune. Start feeling out so you can make yourself feel better. Start finding out what's what's making you hurt. What's making you not accomplish the things that you're trying to accomplish? What's making you stop being successful? Sometimes uh, some of my people say, uh, well, man, I got to I got to get out of champagne. Sometimes you got to change your environment. Beat your feet. I always say, beat your feet, go experience something, especially young people. Go see something out. The world is vast. It's a whole lot out there. And this wasn't the first town that was built. I always say this town was built off haters anyway, you know, because it's a spirit that come along with the package. And a lot of my leadership, you know, that, you know a lot of the things, that the voice that we have is because of a lack of leadership. A uh, few of us are getting some successes. We shut the door down right behind us. So it ain't no doors open. They locked. They got four or five locks on the door. Once we made it to West Champagne, we ain't trying to get nobody else at West Champagne. We ain't trying to see nobody else with the big car, the crib, the successfulness. I want to see everybody get through the door.
Because like, like they said on Fire Harvey, it's lonely at the top. So you want everybody to try to have success. So we can, once we all get together, then we got something to bring to the table. I ain't got to bring the greens, the chicken, the macaroni, the gravy, the pie. Everybody has had his potluck. And that's how life is. We've all bring something to the table with our motives pure. You know, I ain't trying to spike the punch. You know what I'm saying? Slip some, slipping Mickey on somebody. Because a lot of times we come to the table, we try to slip something on somebody. So we can see them act crazy or look bad or something to talk about. You know? Be careful at the people that, be careful the, the, the people that like to be around your enemies. That go, for, go from your circle, like the Judas, go from your circle to go find and seek out your enemies and then talk about your enemies about you. You know? A lot of times people say, uh, Sean, so-and-so, so-and-so said so-and-so, so-and-so about you. First of all, watch the messenger. And then I always sit back and I say, well, what did you say while they were saying what they saying? You know, did you defend me? You know, people are supposed to defend your honor, especially if they friends and family and all this other type of stuff. What did you say? You know, did you, did you check them? You know, because we got to check folk. That's the only way we're going to get better. Do it with love, but check folk. You know, you ain't got to whoop them or none of that type of stuff. You got to get them straight. Let people know, you know, that you can't talk about my friends like that. You can't talk about, you know, people that, that I look up to, you know, people that's going somewhere, people that's trying to go somewhere, you know, people that's trying to help folk, you know. So I, so I, I check folks constantly when it comes down to that, you know. I, I, I knew a buddy man, he in the penitentiary right now, but he gave a party on his birthday for everybody else. How many people give a party for everybody else on their birthday? We always looking for something. You know, it's my birthday, what you got for me? Let me hold some. I get tired of when I see grown folks talk, especially when you do it the same old thing. You know, let me hold something. That's the just old hold some mentality. You know, I, I call it a public aid mentality. Keeping it 100 and real across the board, the views and opinions of Sean. You gotta get out of that. It's for, it's for temporary assistance only. It ain't a lifestyle, it ain't a place to stay at. I'm not knocking you if you're getting it. I'm not knocking you if you're getting it. But it's for temporary purposes. It ain't for to be on forever. So when the government shut down, man, it's about ownership. You own you. You ain't worried about the government shutting down. You ain't worried about them not approving what a President Barack Obama want to happen to make our lives better. Don't worry about it, President. Keep on doing what you're doing because God got the final say. And when you live on them principles, you can't do nothing but go up. When folks try to shut you down, God going to end up making something even better. Your wolf, the wolves in your life ain't going to be able to eat the sheep because God ain't going to change the way their eating habits are. They're going to start eating what the sheep eat eating. The wolves in your life going to come to you. So them haters in your life going to come to you and they'll start curring out. You're going to start curring them out because you study making forward progress. You study moving. You study moving. So, you know, I thank the Lord for you guys um, that's listening to the program. We got the 103rd district race coming up. Uh, very, very, uh, a very competitive uh, uh, democratic um, com 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 competition going on with, uh, with uh, Carol Ammons uh, versus uh, Sam Rosenberg. And I just want to kind of end it off on talking on the political segment. To me, this is the views and opinions of Sean. I'm not, a, I never wanted to be, a, uh, after I had a small experience as a young man uh, and some of my family members in a gang, I never wanted to participate in the gang no more because I watched the people that was in charge didn't do the right things. I understood then leadership could be bad. So as I look at, you know, same principles go, even when it go to a different perspective, uh, a different plateau, should I say. So when it come down to politics, it don't make no difference if you're Democrat, Republican, Independent. How are your motives pure? How are your focus together? Be for the people. Be the servant. Be ready to serve your community, like my brother Hub said, to, to death do us part. And that's what serving and representing somebody else is about. So it ain't about what I think. Go to the people. It's like almost the Bristol Park neighborhood, and we talked about that on a, on a previous segment. Go to the neighborhood, find out what the neighbors think. What do they want? What are the things that's, that, that the, 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 the blockages and the, and the, and the things that, um, that they need to encourage their lives and make them better. So I encourage you candidates out there to go do that and go vote. Go vote. Stop complaining about things that you don't even go to the polls to even cast your vote.
people didn't die to pave the way. And you sit back and say, well, it just, it ain't, and my vote ain't going to count. Yeah, it ain't going to count if you don't go. So as, 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 as our forefathers have laid their life on the line because, you know, so many of our older people, I love my older African-American people. I do. I love them to death because they stood for something. They got to have all the education, but they believed in what they believed in and, and to the day they died. And that's what we got to start adding some of, you know, all this new stuff. We got to continue to have on hold on to some of our old stuff, too, our old morals, principles and values, you know, and the things that um, black folks believed in, because they would get they would rather get shot down with some fire hoses. They'd rather get beat down in the street to go for anything. So we got to be able to put some sacrifice on the table, come to the table with some sacrifice. You know, yeah, you might have to, you know, catch a, catch a cab or you might have to get on the MTD. It might be a cold day voting day. But because the people that paved the way for you to be able to sit back and watch cable TV, to be able to drink out of public water fountain, to be able to be in the front of the bus, to be able to go to the University of Illinois or Harvard or Yale or Howard or, or, or Tuskegee or any of these schools, to be able to have those opportunities, Man, make them people proud, even though that they ain't here. They can look down on heaven and say, at least so-and-so, so-and-so doing what he's supposed or she's supposed to be doing. At least do your part. So it doesn't make me a difference because I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to tell you whether it's white, black, brown, whoever it is. Just take the opportunity out there to go promote somebody. Build somebody else up. You know, connect to something. You know, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I look, see me personally, I'm going to keep it 100. I'll tell you wh where I am. I'm an independent, independent thinker. It's a different type of attitude when you have some ownership. I don't care if I was pushing lawnmowers for myself because that was what I did back in the day. Me and my brother, we'd get on our lawnmower, we'd tie it to the back of our bike, and we rode through the neighborhood. First, first opportunity of ownership and opportunity of leadership and, and independency because you created your own dollar off the blood and the sweat of just you. Uh, sneezing, I had hay fever back then. <laughs> sneezing through all the grass, but when the older lady paid me $5 or the older gentleman paid me $10 or $8 so I can go to skate land, whew, I was happy. When we went to the school and we, we corned the tassel back in the day, you know? I mean, whatever it is to create the avenue for you, to be able to make you be an independent thinker. Don't let, stop letting people dictate information and, and, uh, and, and dissect the information and then regurgitate it back to you in their own views and opinions. Because once we read something, we all gonna pull something different out of it because the Lord got us, he created us all different. So we all gonna bring something else different to the table like the macaroni and cheese. Everybody don't make five macaroni and cheese. You know, I done tasted some terrible macaroni and cheese. You know, some terrible dressing. You know, some, some, I done tasted some terrible fried chicken. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't gonna do it the same. So our gifts and our, our gifts are different. But when we put them all together, we have to help somebody. So, you know, as we close that off, uh, in closing, my last statement is that I just had something on my television, on my radio program on uh, w WEFT. We do it on Sunday mornings with Pastor uh, Davida Bernard, Mother Hattie Pope, Brother David Allen, uh, my nephew Jamar Brown, uh, and, and, uh, and, and the legend, Reverend. Uh, Robert R. West created that avenue for us called uh, Unity for the Community. As I, and as I dig, did a segment on this past Sunday, you know, I left the studio pretty choked up. And it choked me up because of the fact that, uh, you know, as we talk about relationship peace and not everybody got your best interests at heart, as I read a, read a letter from Janice Mitchell and some of the things that she said about her center over in Nevada, and I looked at some of the African American people that um, were against her and her efforts to be on housing and the conflict of interest that they might see over at her, her, her center, you know. And, and, and what it, I, I don't know the details, and it, to me, the details ain't a, a, as important to me. The main thing for me is that Urbana is struggling. The people in Deep Urbana are struggling. I, I walk over there door to door doing insurance a lot of times. And I listen to the stories and from the neighbors, from the people in that neighborhood. And being able to have a youthful center over there to help the youth and the families over in the banner, that's major to me. So I would want to see, let's stop doing black on black crime where we tearing each other down. Where we, because if she didn't have her center, 
You know who it, who it hurts? It hurts the families in Urbana. It makes the city of Urbana have another struggle and another hurdle that they got to have to now fill a void for. You know, another 5013 from somewhere else. Another place where tracing them at all access initiative got to go and do something else. You know, let's take the burden off each other. So, it, it, uh, like Bishop said, if you ain't got something kind to say, you ain't got nothing nice to say, sometimes just shut up. Leave it alone. Bag up. Let's start encouraging each other. I left the studio so, so distraught yesterday because, you know, folks ready to tear folks down. And we see it in business all the time. We don't want to build up what, we, what God has gave us. We'd rather go somewhere else and build up somewhere else and tear down what's right around us. But bless us start within, then spread abroad. Start right there in the household. Start right there in the neighborhood. Start right there in your local community. Support what's in your local community so that we can all have something. And then when you struggle, I got something to get to you. But if you don't support me, then I can't give you nothing. A lot of times they come to me, Sean, a cotillion or, or your chicken dinners or this, that. But then you, you it's, it's, like, it's, like what, it's like what Jesus say, you know, uh, when, when, when it talks about the Bible, you know, it, 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 and I'm going to get my own version of it. Get away from me for your work was in iniquity. I don't even know you because you didn't do it. I don't even know you, but you want to hold something. And that's the way that, that, that piece speaks to me in my spirit. You got to plant some in order to get some. So we got to do that for ourselves. So as I get ready to close this segment of another, uh, another episode of Let the Truth Be Told, um, you know, I thank the Lord for everybody that, that participate, that helps me. Uh, the young lady that's videoing, I thank the Lord for you. I seen you shaking your head a few times. So that means that I was hitting a, fun, uh, a few points that might be enlightening to somebody else. I truly do this here just to help somebody to uh, take a little bit of time out because a lot of times, even with our own kids, and I felt, you know, even as I went in my, son, in my kids' lives for a long time, I understood, and what they made me understood is, Dad, time was important. So a lot of times, all we got to do is slow down and give back some time. And times are very important. So give your time to your community, and not all the time we got to get paid for something. Volunteer sometime, because it's about the training and the experience that you're going to get out of it, where you're going to be able to be the blessing, because you can't expect top pay, and you don't know top information. Yeah, that, only come with, that only come, top pay come from the folks that's top. You can't be bottom and ask for top. Your worth that this ain't nothing. Your training ain't nothing. Your, pre your presentation ain't nothing. Go back and get what the devil has stole from you. So as I close it out, and you guys, uh, I encourage you to encourage me. When you see me riding down the street or you come to my barbershop or unfortunately if your family's at the funeral home and you're making some pre-planning and arrangements or even doing some insurance through the insurance piece because we got to start getting out there and getting some life insurance, y'all, because it's coming to be too big of a struggle for churches and pastors and community and stuff to be able to come up with a, a significant amount of money somewhere in the realm about eight to ten thousand dollars to be able to bury our loved ones in the proper proper perspectives the way we want to memorialize them without having that insurance piece together so for a little bit of nothing go get that taken care of man if you call me or you call somebody else any other insurance agency around this town you know get a fair price for a significant amount of money to care to cover you know, your final expenses and the loss of wages or the loss of you being there. So I thank the Lord for you. Big shouts out to you. And man, let the truth be told.